Final thought. Now, one of the gems of the DC area and a great source of pride for me as a DC area native is Gallaudet University. I very much appreciate any institution which provides opportunity to those who otherwise might not have one. And Gallaudet is one of the country's finest examples. They've also exemplified the city's long demand for justice, as we spent this week talking about the civil rights protests, as well as the ongoing protests at Howard. 30 years ago, students at Gallaudet University embarked on a 10-day protest, demanding that the university appoint a deaf president to better understand the, new, the needs of their student body. Now, in 1988, Gallaudet's board of trustees named Elizabeth Zinser as the next president. Zinser was the only hearing candidate among the three finalists, and she didn't know sign language. Now, a majority of the board could hear, which is what set the protests in motion. After a week of protests, the university gave in to student demands. Zinser announced her resignation, and Gallaudet named its first deaf president, I. King Jordan. Now, the week-long protests forever changed Gallaudet and inspired the deaf community. However, students, alumni, and experts all say more is still needed three decades later to boost the number of deaf leaders and deaf jobs. Less than 40% of people who are deaf or hard of hearing in the U.S. were employed full-time in 2016, according to Cornell, Cornell University. So I want to take this opportunity to thank those students who stood up for each other 30 years ago and today to recognize and request that we continue to find ways to provide employment opportunities to the deaf. All right, we're going to continue this conversation on.